Let us uh, together by our prayer. Father, it is a uh, blessing to be alive today, and we want to thank you for what you have uh, brought forth in our lives, uh, throughout every day of our lives, uh, and every day last week, Father. But we want to thank you for this day, that you have enriched us and blessed us, and given us an opportunity to uh, maybe not repay, but acknowledge you, Father, yeah. to lift you up, to, to, to take some time to say, Lord, we know it was you to praise you, to honor you with our, our songs and with our worship service, Father, and I, and I just hope that it's pleasing itself in that sight. Yeah. You've done so many things that uh, makes you worthy, that makes us stand in awe of you, kind of Father. And, and as I reflect on it in my mind, I'm just thankful, and I want you to know we appreciate you, Father. <coughs> So I pray that you help us uh, learn better through your word and through studying and through uh, assembling and gathering from each other uh, helpful things that will help us to bring more honor and praise to you. Yes. We thank you for the leadership and for the growth of this church. Yes. Because even though a uh, man may have water, man planted, you, yes, you gave the increase. Yes. And we pray, kind Father, that you work with those leaders, that they may continue to do that in planting and water. Give them wisdom, give them understanding, give them strength and health in their physical bodies uh, to do the things that uh, they have uh, been charged to do through your word. And bless us as a congregation to support them and learn and glean and become better. Yes. Father, it's just a great opportunity that we have to be Christians. And I'm so excited this morning and glad to know that there is a a being that's willing to help me be a better person. Yeah. Who've done so much. He has done so much. Gave me an earth. Yeah. Gave me out of breathe. Mm -hmm. Gave me a, a savior. Yeah. And if I let him, he'll bring me on home. Yeah. Spend in turn with me. Mm -hmm. Help me, Father, help us all. Submit to your will and your way. For we ask and pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, and I bow down before you. I worship at the 
Matthew chapter 18, 32 through 35. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 32 through verse number 35. Which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it had grown, it is the greatest among herbs and become into a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, to the whole was leaven. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. I read Matthew chapter 13, verses number 32 through verse number 34. May the Lord add a blessing to those who are readers and the doers of his word. Any and everything. 
Yeah. Lord, we just want to thank you for allowing us to wake up this day yeah. to see a day that we have never seen before. That's right. Lord, we just pray that this day will be better as we go out this day than it was this past. Lord, we just love you so much. Yes, we do. Lord, we just ask you, pray, when that time comes for your kingdom, mm -hmm. that we'll be a, among that number. Yes. That we'll get to step foot mm -hmm. into your glory. Yes. Lord, we just want to thank you for allowing us to be here to praise you, to glorify you, yes. and just to be children of the Almighty. Yes, Lord. Lord, as we go through these service today, we just pray and ask that the man of God will say something, speak something that would help each and every one of us to go out out this day to live our life better. But not only to live our life better, but to help someone else. Lord, we pray for these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Heart is in my heart, 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 heart you know that I'll be serving the Lord, don't you know it's in my heart, heart is 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 in my heart.
listening uh, to a conversation that was going on uh, between uh, two people. Uh, at first, I didn't really pay a lot of, of attention to it. And then, Something was said. Uh, and before I 
responded. I was shocked. Now, very few things shocked me, especially when it comes down to the Word of God. Because I've been in it uh, probably longer than uh, I've been preaching. And the idea was Do you really think <coughs> you know what forgiveness means? Yeah. Yeah. Now, 40 years have gone by. <coughs> and if anybody thought they knew <laughs> what forgiveness meant, then I should know. But I come, rather than just jump up and say something, I went back and I looked at a text. Looked at Matthew 5, looked at uh, Matthew 18. And that's what we're coming back to in a moment. You know, there are just some things in your life You thought you know, or you should know. Should know your wife's name. Only know where to work. <laughs> Amen. But this thing has started to pick at me. And I didn't want you need to study it to be sure. I'm going to share something with you this morning. That every last one of you believe you know the answer to. All right, all right. All right. But you know what I found out? Between 70 and 75% of the people didn't know the answer to the question of repentance and forgiveness. Yeah, we're in the body of Christ. We're in the church of Christ. We ought to know. But if you're anything like, I was. You think you know, but you really don't know. So I'm going to share with you a subject. And the subject is entitled. I guess I should entitle repentance and forgiveness. Okay. A lot of us who say it that, hey, I repent, you have to repent. That person you were mad with last year, you still mad with. Mm -hmm. That brother that you were all upset with, you still upset with. But you say it, you let it go. Just saying so don't make it so. Right now. And <laughs> metaphor. In graduate steps, without in graduate. The brother was charismatic. He had to, that kind of personality. They just drew you in. You wanted to hear everything that he had to say. And he never showed a frown, but he always showed a smile when he talked to you. Right. And when he talked to a crack, it seemed like he wasn't talking to the crack, but he was talking to just you. This brother called to the minister, stood up. <clears throat> I thought it would be an announcement, but it was a confession. Mm. Well, 
did he confess? He was married to this beautiful, gorgeous sister. And I've been married for over 10 years. But the problem came down to that she was married to somebody else when he met her. And because he liked her, because he loved her, because he had the power to do so, he took her. And they later married, had children, four of them, I believe. And for 10 years, he struggled with repentance. He struggled with forgiveness. And so one day he made up his mind that something needs to change. <coughs> And I'll tell you what that is. A little bit later on. Well, we understand that if we have something that doesn't belong to us, we don't have the authority that, uh, to own it, then we sure don't have the authority to sell it or exchange it for benefit. Why? Because it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to someone else. Right. Well, let me look at it. Matthew 18, 33 and 35. Should have not, well, I'll give you a few moments to get there. Matthew 18, 33 and 35. Should have not thou also have had Compassion. Compassion means kindness. Compassion means to pity another. Compassion means to give courage, power, and honor to build up another. And the word says, have compassion on thy servant, even as I had pity or compassion on thee. And his Lord was wrong. That is, he was angry. Uh, his hair was stinging. He was upset with somebody. Uh, and it says, till he should pay all that was due unto him. He was cast into prison. He was tormented until he paid off. Now, in prison, in jail, he decided to plead his case. Uh, and the one that he owed was willing to negotiate. And the one that he owed was willing to have him to be released. He got out. Soon he got out of jail, he found somebody else. And this time, this person owed him. 
He threw him in jail. Not having compassion. Not having pity on him. And the Lord looks at these uh, two servants. And the one who received grace, the one who received mercy, the one who received kindness, did not give kindness, did not give love, compassion in return. <coughs> we can always find somebody to talk about. We can always find where the real dirty news is. And we can't wait to tell it. But when the shoe's on the other foot, no, don't talk about me. Stay out of my business. Well, let me help you. Is your family your business? They are. And guess what? Your business is our business. A sister took his thing uh, far beyond what the scriptures and characters to do. She had a bunch of folks had traveled to have fellowship with another congregation. I guess probably six, seven, four. Uh, they went that morning, and they were able to get in by the evening. Evening service stopped. Now, nobody told me that. Open up the invitation. Now, get this now. You're going to learn something. Sister stood up. Children, her children, are in your audience. As she said, almost flew with me. I committed a double church. And if that wasn't enough, she went on and named the brother that she committed a double church. Concerning stuff. 
We got for cars. We got for money. We got for jewelry. Some of us got for houses. And the question is, if it doesn't belong to you, how can you sell it? And how can you ignore the debt that you owe? Amen. See, we sell and dispose of things that's in our possession. But being so that it's in our possession doesn't mean that it belongs to us. Amen. You can have my car. Don't mean it belongs to you. You can have my wife. Don't mean that she belongs to you. That somewhere along the line, we got to understand what repentance and what forgiveness really mean. Uh, and in many cases, we haven't repented, nor have we been forgiven. I want you to know that in Matthew 5, it talks about your gift. And your gift is worship, is your sacrifice in Matthew 5. You find out your brother got all against you. Not necessarily that he has all against you, but somebody else got all against you. And you hear about it. What do you do? What we do, we don't say anything. We get ready in our vehicle, we come to worship, and we worship God and we go home. All of a sudden, all this that you did in worship don't mean nothing to God. You wasted your time. Because you know that you got all against that brother. You know you got all against that sister. You know if you ever catch him alone in the dark. You going to dot their eyes and cross their teeth. So you know that. But even though you know, you pretend that you don't know. The Bible says if you go to that person and you talk to them along. Now you communicate with this person, you tell this person uh, what's going on in my life because of you. You don't have the right to call your sister, your brother, and talk to them before or even after you talk to the body. You got to give time for things to work out right in their life. Now, we need to understand that since the word gift means a sacrifice, God expects you, God expects me that my prayer, my life, my attitude be a fully acceptable offering to God. All right. A couple things you do with sacrifice. You kill them. Bake them on that fire. Amen. And the rest is consumed. Nothing is left. You say you forgive her. But every time you see her, you start frowning your face. Some of them got nervous legs. 
Every time you see him, your legs start shaking. <laughs> and you can't stop it. But you say, I forgive him. Every time there's a fellowship, you find someone else to hang out with because you don't want to hang out with him. You don't want to hang out with her. But the Lord is saying that we have to learn how to repent. We got to learn how to forgive. Now we have to understand that when God speaks of forgiving from the heart, he suffered from a pure heart, from a genuine heart, not a hard heart, not a stone heart, not a black heart. And the question that I want you to do, because I'm doing it too, is to ask yourself, did you really forgive him? Did you really forgive him? And you know what I found out? Steve, something don't feel right here. Something don't sound right here. See, I looked at forgiveness. But I never took the time to look at Matthew 1835, where it says that we have to forgive from the heart. All right? So I forgave as much as I understood. But these four, I never forgave really from the heart. Because I'm still thinking about it. Every once in a while, I'm still mad at them. Every once in a while, I see them, and they don't see me. I hate the other one. And that's what some of you have been doing. Yet you say that you have forgiven. And in Matthew 18, 35, the focus Get this down. If dealing with the mindset of the one who should forgive. So what's your mindset? Hmm? Can you truly walk over and hug him? Kiss him on the cheek? Smile in his face? Can you truly shake your sister's hand? I'm not talking about no wet thing we do. But can you grab her with one hand and put another hand over her hand and say, Sister, it's good to see you. God bless you. But we haven't gotten there yet. We haven't gotten there yet. We are not to ignore the problem. <laughs> we have a responsibility to fix the problem. <clears throat> Leave your gift, fix the problem, and return to worship. Right. Forgiveness that I found is one of the hardest things that I've ever really had to do. Because it meant stop thinking about some stuff that you've been thinking about. Stop dreaming about some stuff you've been dreaming about. Well, how can you stop yourself from dreaming? Well, you don't cost you anything. Normally, the dream cycle it's going to be within two to five days of some event in your life. In other words, you thought about it, amen, meditated on it, now you're dreaming about it. That shows that it's still on your mind, still on your heart. See, the folks you dream about, 
and say you love? The older folk you love? Well, let me give you this. And I think that it will be beneficial. I spoke about the young man who had this one. This was the guy who was madly in love with him. Maybe I shouldn't use the term madly. But he was devoted. He loved her more than he loved himself. He decided, I'm going to marry this Not thinking about what he was going to do. And he married four beautiful children to this youth. Now he's standing for the student body, the instructors, the professionals, and he got a story to tell you. And the story is I can't take it anymore. I got to do something. And there are some times, mostly all of the time, that when you're in between a situation of uh, bouncing to the left, to the right, to the front, to the back, it's telling you that you're unstable. It's telling you that you are really unsure. Even though you tell me you love me, even though you shake my hand, but in the heart of heart, you know you don't love me and you don't trust me. Something to give me uh, this book. Women say, I would forgive you. I want to forgive you, but how in the world can I know that you won't do it again? Well, you can't know. And also, what the guilty party did to the Lord and to the family, that's the guilty party. Your responsibility as one that has been hurt is to forgive, to forget, and to move on. See, we, we tie our, when I pray for you, I shake your hand, I hug you, as long as you admit your situation in the problem. You're not responsible for that person. God hold that person responsible. Uh, your responsibility is for your own soul. Amen. And God said, if we don't forgive others, yes. guess what? He's not going to forgive us. We're a whole lot of folk in the church. They're not even going to make it in. Because they really didn't forgive us. They really didn't forgive us. They continue on to press forward. Looking for an opportunity to get in. Well, let's share this. <clears throat> and the thought is that elders, deacons, preachers need to spend time get involved in the lives of others. Your eldership ought to be involved in your life. Your eldership, that when you get sick, hey, we, we want to come over. 
Well, I know how some of us are. Well, the house don't look exactly like we need it to. We're not coming to look at your house. We're coming over there to look at you and to pray for you. <coughs> Another man the other day, I think it was yesterday, shocked me. This man had, had a stroke. It's been more than a year ago, for sure. The guy talks. The guy walks <coughs> like he never had a stroke. And I got to thinking that God is not a respecter person. Yeah. You fix him, Lord. <laughs> fix my hunt. All right? And we're still maintaining faith that God is going to step in and that God is going to work out. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You can't repent. Repentance means basically to turn from the error of your ways. Forgiveness basically means before give or forgive. It carries with the idea of before, before your emotions get all tangled up. And let your head get out all screwed up with some of these evil thoughts. Because of what you did to me. Now I can talk about this. All right? Now I got a cane over there. It ain't work too much just to help you get around. So you get me riled up. <laughs> And you, Amen. Amen. That's right. So I need help. The Lord helps me to control myself. Because if I don't control myself, you're not going to control yourself. And the church is going to look like and smell like God to the world. Let me share this. I'm not responsible for your child. I'm not responsible for your rent. I'm not responsible for your utility, your house payment. Paul says, have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Now, when you went out there and got that car, you know you've been paid for. Yeah. Don't be dragging me into it, getting upset with me, because I got a little chain, I won't help you out. You knew you were behind in child support. You didn't ask me, could you make the baby? Now, why are you asking me to pay for the baby? All right? Amen. You better have some more pay for themselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to leave that uh, where it is. Right. But forgiveness must come from the heart. Amen. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brother. They are trespassers. Now he said, give your brother a trespass. You know why you use that term trespass? Trespass basically means a real sign. In other words, it's not hidden, it's not obscure, it's not mixed up with something else. You can see it clearly. You know, you trespass me. When you told that lie well, on me. Mm -hmm. You know you trespass on my wife. When you say that you saw her doing something that she ought not to have been doing with another man. 
you trust that. And what the Word of God is saying, that when people clearly yeah. step across the line on you, yeah. they didn't make a mistake. Mm -hmm. right. They did it purposely. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. All them folk that you said I thought I could forgive because they did it ignorantly, they weren't equal. They did it because they wanted to do it. They did it because they wanted you to hurt. Those folks, God said, we are to forgive and to forgive from the heart. Amen. We don't forgive in part, but we forgive totally, completely to all offenses against us. We catch ourselves sad. We catch ourselves weeping over situation, not realizing that same situation that God will give you power to be able to overcome it and give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Stop what you're doing. Be reconciled. Repentance and reconciliation is two different things. Reconciliation means to restore back to the good part. Mm -hmm. Before he said, before she did what she did, and before he said what he said, Go ahead and forgive. Our problem is we want to think on it. We want to pray on it. And it's nothing to think on. It's nothing to pray on. Because Jesus has said you are to forgive from the heart. That means that baby daddy that won't pay no child support. Mothers, you get upset with it. Won't let him see his baby. But you made the decision to sleep with him. Now, if you made a decision to sleep with him, and he won't take care of his obligation, it seems to me the fault really is on you. Amen. I want you to understand that Brother Moore, love him. Can we talk? Yeah. And sometimes what we really need to do, we need to talk it out. We need to work it out. We need to love it out and call upon the Spirit to empower us to take it out. In Zechariah 4 and verse number 6, the text said, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zabuk.
to do the right thing. Woman was caught in a dope. And Jesus on the spot forgave. And he forgave him from the heart. And you from your heart. How to forgive your brother. How to forgive your sister. Even if you think they don't deserve it. Because I got news for you. You didn't deserve, we didn't deserve Jesus' forgiveness. And if Jesus forgave us from the heart, we ought to be willing to forgive others from the heart. There are no limitations or boundaries when it comes down to forgiveness. We have to understand we have to forgive one and all who trespass against us. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And when he said that, he sent away the punishment. Every time we mess up, we got punishment to deal with. God can forgive us of our sins, but many times he don't remove the punishment. You know why? Because if you weren't punished, if I wasn't punished, I'd do it again. I went over there and disrespect that man. And he pulled that double barrel shotgun at me. Shot. Got my ear. But thank God he didn't get my ear. Now I know next time I'll fool him. All right? Amen. Go around, creep around somebody's back door. And they catch you in the house. And you don't belong in the house. And when they get finished with you, you outrun your own cop trying to get home. <laughs> Pain motivates us and encourages us to do what's right. When you try to resolve that, by taking pain from your children, taking pain from your husband, taking pain from your wife, you cripple them. Because they think that they can do it again, and because you're always pulling them out, you can pull them out again. Something they got to understand, I love you, I forgive you, but the consequence of this act is up to you to clean it up. Amen. Let me go. Let me kind of bring it on home. Whereby that we will be helped. We say, my mama, my brother, my father, my friend burnt my life. Folks don't ruin your life. You run, you, you ruin your own life by your choice. Yes, that daddy might have suggested it, mama might have suggested it, brother or sister may have suggested it, but you made the choice to do what you do. So it's time you let folk off the hook and say, I made the choice, I did the thing, I'm repenting, and I'm forgiving. Right. Amen. We have to understand. We are released not to do our own thing, but to do God's thing. We are released not to be bitter, but to be happy. We are released. Amen. Not to go to the left, but to always go to God's right. Amen. To forgive is to release our rights 
to hurt others because of what they have done to us. Won't you understand that forgiveness, amen, releases our right to keep bringing the offense up in our mind or in the privacy of our home. To forgive and to extend mercy, to give folk what they don't deserve rather than giving them what they do deserve. To forgive, amen, is a gift of grace, not a condemnation of sin before the Lord. To forgive is to set the offender free. Amen. That we also can be free. Deuteronomy 30 and verse number 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed, thy family, may live. When you repent, when you confess, you are sending an example for others to follow in your footsteps. But when you know you did it, <coughs> evident that you did it, but you won't admit it, that's a sad path for someone else to follow. I want you to know we need to say Lord I've wandered I've drifted far away from God but now right now I'm coming home Never more to roam. Open wide thy arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Tomorrow is in promise. The present is now fleeting away. It's time now to repent. It's time now to forgive. It's time now to really come on back home. I wasted many, but now I'm coming home. I now repent with bitter teeth, but Lord, I'm coming home. I'm tired of sin and straying, Lord, but now, Lord, I'm coming home. I trusted thy love, believed in thy word. Lord, I'm coming home. Why don't you make up your mind this morning that you're going to come home, that you're going to repent, that you're going to confess, and that you're going to walk out and obey God. You know, repentance carries with the idea of gain. Yeah, you may have turned in the past, but you didn't turn far enough because you see a nourishing the thought, the hatred in your heart, what if she is done. The word repentance means you come back and visit and say no more, no more. I've forgiven you. God has forgiven me. And if God sees fit to punish you, to 
punishment will not come from me. Some of you have been in this church uh, 20, 30 years. And folk that left this church, going on to other places, they hold on to their stuff, and you still holding on to you. The only reason you're not happy this morning is because you looked around and saw he, he or she come back for a visit. Then it reminds you of all that evil stuff that you did. But forgiving. Pray for him and wait on the Lord. Because if you plead for it, you beg for it, and your heart is right with God, God is going to bless you. If you're not a child of God, you got to hear the word you already heard. It. You got to repent, turn from your sin. You have to confess Jesus to be the Son of God and your Savior. And then be baptized for the remission, the forgiveness of sin. Acts 2 and 38. And then the Lord adds you to his church. You don't run all that, you know, join the church. The church that the Lord wants you in, he adds you to it. And thank God that some of you have been recently baptized, but you're still here. You haven't ran off. You know what? Sometimes you think you have done something, and you haven't done something. I thought I took my medication. Up. 